Hi. Hey, how are you, Gorane? Čuješ me? Čuješ. Dobro, kako, kako si zove? Pa sve, sve super. How are you? Pa, fine, thank you. Everything perfect. Excellent. I'm in Dubrovnik still. I was, I was today on the island, on, on the Mjet. And because of that, I told you that I'm not sure when, when I will be back. Yeah. So on, you know, on Wednesday, I will be in Zagreb. So, but if you, when you send me to the evening, it's also okay for you. That's for me, not a problem at all. Oh, excellent. Because I, I know when you're, when you're in Dubrovnik, uh, things things can happen pretty quickly there. It's one of the yeah. most <laughs> one of the most beautiful places in the whole Eastern Europe. So I know. Yeah, and I was born there. You know, my, my mother is from Dubrovnik, so I'm I'm gonna have close connect with with Dubrovnik. So I use every moment to to be there. What do you think? They have a kill with the t-shirt. I, I still I, I I don't have New York handball with with my surname on the back, but I have it at home. You know. Yeah, you, you you have the one, but. Where is it? I don't have it. I don't okay, okay. I'm not here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, because I need, I need, I need to send you a new one. We have a new version, which is, I think, it's even better. So, it hey, just... it's only my pleasure. It's my pleasure. <laughs> well, uh, Gorane, uh, first of all, I want to say thank you for joining me on uh, on this show, Straight Handball Talk. I don't know how much you know about this, uh, but I started this show during the coronavirus because I have, you know, we were stuck at home and we had so much time uh, to think about all kind of stuff. And one of them was about handball and how, how great it was for me to, to help me build relationships. And it's about conversation with people, uh, whether they're teammates, competitors, partners, or just friends or, or handball lovers. And we connected forever because of, of the extraordinary bonding power of handball. And you are one of the people that obviously, aside from your career, which I'm going to talk a little bit about it, you are a phenomenal person. You are, you are uh, someone who joined us in New York City and, and had a lot of fun. Aside from playing, you really brought a lot of energy to the whole uh, environment, uh, you and Jomba as well. Uh, and we, we stayed in touch. And I think you still are involved, not in the coaching or anything capacity, but you still do things uh, uh, with handball. So I'm, I'm very, very happy uh, that you're a part of this show. So thank you and welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you, Benny, to invite me. So I have to tell that I'm, I'm really happy to, to hear the, the things that you start the this show, I saw that you have the, the, the few episodes before with Carlos Prieto, with Vranjes, with, with the guys. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very happy. I, I wish you good luck. And I have to tell you that uh, the, the, the days I spent in New York, not just once, I was there three, four times. Yeah. It, uh, it's really perfect. And I hope that we will see soon there. Yeah, no, I can't wait for you to come back because we, we, we talked about you coming back. And, and hopefully as soon as this stuff is over, you're going to come back. So uh, quickly, for the people who are going to listen to the show, for 10 years, you represented the uh, Croatian national team. Uh, you won a gold medal in 2004 uh, Olympics in Athens. You played three world championships. You got one gold medal, two, bro uh, two silver medals. You also played in European championships in Switzerland, where you guys took fourth place. Uh, this is all with the national team. But on, on the club level, you, are, uh, you played two finals of the Champions League with Zagreb. Unfortunately, twice you lost against a mighty Barcelona. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but but it's okay. It's Barcelona after all, considering the the, the budgets at that time and that what they had, you know, playing against Zagreb, uh, you know, it's hard to beat them. But you did win the EHF Cup with uh, Nordhorn, I believe. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and you know, you finished your career what eight years ago? Um, I think like in 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 Gummersbach, seven and a half, eight, eight years ago. Yeah, eight, I finished my in, career there. in Gummersbach. So. You had a phenomenal career, uh, uh, incredibly successful career. Um, so one thing that I'm asking all these superstars who made a life out of handball, how did you get started and how did you fall in love with handball? Yeah, you will not believe me when I told you that I, learned, I, I, I was a sports fan until I was a kid. And once in the, the sports can always that's that's uh, the newspaper, so just about sports was one, one, one text about the guys who want to start with the play handball. Came to came to, to, to this sport hall, and I seen that the bus came to the hall with 10 years old. I was 10, 10 and a half years old, yeah. and it started just just like that. It's it's funny thing, but it's really started like that. And I'm kind of happy that I, I picked the right the right sport. I picked the handball, and I really have a really really good career. Yeah, but who was who was your first initial coach or the person who kind of said, okay, you know, I I see you, you you show interest, but then they see, okay, but you have also the ability to, one, understand the sport, and two, have that physical uh, ability. Who was that person who pushed you? 
And that, that was some, uh, at, at the end, the, the, my first sports coach, my, my first handball coach was Boris Dvorak. Okay. He was then the coach of the, of the uh, RK Zagreb. He was coach of the young national teams in Croatia and Italy. At the moment, he's in Finland, I think so. Okay. But he's the guy who, who took us with when we were uh, 10, mm -hmm. whole, uh, whole, uh, whole our career till, uh, till senior status. And uh, in, in that team was Zrnić also, Spoljaric, Vori, Latsko, which was there. So we were uh, really, really good, really good team all, all, all these things, all this time. And from, from this side, I'm, I'm so happy to, to, to have so teammates like that who can help, who can help each other to, to make such a, such a successful career. But that was, you guys were such a golden generation, though. It's like it's. I, had, I, I have a luck to play in the generation. I, have to, I, not, I, was, I wasn't the best one. I have a luck to play with the guys, yeah. with the guys like Malik Slatsky, which is so essential. Yeah. yeah, well, you know what? You know why it is. You have the guys, but then you fit in and handball always. We need that, that chemistry. And it was one of the most beautiful generations at that time with Croatia. Do you remember your first game with Croatia and the first goal you ever scored for Croatia? Yes, I was 18. <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. I was 18. We played. We played with the national team. That was my first time I came to the to the national team. And uh, I, I can remember the moment when the coach said, "Come, little kid, you, you come in." We play against Norway in the Rovin, some friendship game. Okay. And I came there when I scored the goal. I thought that that's the end of the world. I did, I did everything in my career that I had to do. <laughs> <laughs> but it was not the start. And I have still one more thing. In the sports, when you when you look at my career back, so 20, 25 years at handball, you have to work a lot. You have to have a talent. You have everything. But one one, one big piece of that is the luck. You have to have the, the great coach, the luck, the coach who will give you the chance. And I had the the Velimir Kjaj, the older yeah. Kjaj, who was my trainer when I was 17. And I have to not the first goal. I would just one more thing. The first goal in, in national in national team, I remember. But my first uh, my first game. Yeah. For the senior team of Erka Zagreb was Champions League final. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, I didn't play any game before that for the first team, and I just trained with them. And they played in Barcelona first, yeah. uh, uh, first, uh, uh, first uh, game in the Champions League final, and there was a lot of injured players. Yeah. And nobody have to, nobody can play in, in second game. And the guy called me, "Come on, guy, this was Thursday. <laughs> Come on, Sunday, we'll play Champions League final." I said, "What am I doing?" <laughs> and I, I closed the phone, and my mom asked me, "What's going on?" I'm going to, to the hotel. I will play Champions League final in two days. <laughs> You're joking. I saw my joke like that. And that was, but that is a part of the luck where I really had it. And when you came to the system, it's very hard to come in, but it's much harder to go out if you are good. So I stayed there for the next 20 years and I'm happy because of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, yes, luck, yes, but also if you're ready for that luck. When your, your number is called, then you get the ball, you score. That's it. I mean, that that's the beauty of being ready for that opportunity. I think this is this is good. Yeah, yeah. That that's really that's really like you said it. You can you 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 have your chance some somehow sometimes, but you have to take it. You have to to do the right thing at the right moment. Yeah, and especially from where we come from. And <laughs> like that, <laughs> that one chance, you mess up out. <laughs> Sit down. Yeah, you know you're not the talent. We are you wrong. You. <laughs> That's really, that's really here in, in Croatia or in our part of the world. You, you, you read the chance, but it can be a really problem if you don't do it right way. And like, hey, yeah. who gives you the chance to look good? Yeah, 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 I know. It's crazy. Well, that, that's, I love that. It's a good story. It's, it's, it's kind of a little bit like my story when I played my first game of handball. Uh, whoop. Let me see. Is it me or you? Can you hear yeah, me? I'm, I'm hearing you, hear you, but I'm losing a little bit. Okay. Uh, no, I did, it was kind of the same. I was sitting on the bench, and uh, my coach, this is like a, a, a big game. My coach said, like, Benny, get ready to play. And I've never played a game before. I just started playing. And, and I looked at my friend. I said, do you want to go? <laughs> and, and then I just go in the game. And <laughs> in, <laughs> like, do you go? It's like, no, no, you go. He called your name. I said, okay, I went in, and, and I scored my first goal. But it's, it's the same mentality. And you have you have to success your career. You know, you had a luck to play in the New York the handball, you know. That I have the two two wishes in, in the handball or a lot of wishes. One was the Olympic champions, that's the dream of all dreams for all the sportsmen. Another one was to play in Barcelona and the third one playing the handball in New York, you know. To play <laughs> handball in New York, I'll never do it so like professional professional on this level like you play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> professional, yeah, exactly. Uh, so the other day I actually spoke to uh, 
Jerome Fernandez. And we talked about the 2009 finals in Zagreb. Obviously, no, 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 I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> well, it, it is... <laughs> <laughs> it, it it is a painful thing for you, and and the thing is, it was it was very. Who's Jerome Fernandez? I never heard from him, man. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Who's Jerome? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, that that was a you know I remember I watched that game. I remember the hall, and I remember how of course you're in Croatia. Uh, nobody nobody expected Croatia to lose, obviously, except France had a different idea. But for, for Jerome, it was a completely, it, it was a bigger win, not just on a sports element, but he also had a personal thing going on at that time. Uh, but can you tell me your part of the story, those last five minutes of the game? I mean, what really happened? What I'm really sorry. Happened? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> What's really happened? You know, they had, they had some players, I don't know the names in French, team. They, they won some games, some titles. <laughs> No, really, that was the, the, the team of France. We were good. We were really good. Yeah. But the team of France, what they did what they did in this, this 10, 15, 20, last 20 years, it's incredible. So I have to tell you that we, we had our chance in this game also. We played home and everything. But they have one guy called Thierry Omeyer, you know, and he killed us every time. He had 20, 20, uh, more than 50% of save balls. He was absolutely perfect. They they had the perfect the perfect defense with the, the Brazil brother with Jerome with the Karabatic the excellent player he was behind them to, to take everything what we shot on the on the when we shoot on on his goal and we 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 know that it will be a tough game that will not be a lot of lot of lot of goals and it, it, it like this five six last minutes they go to plus plus three I think so when we know at the moment it is the end and we will lose it and. It's not. It's one of the one of the things I, I don't lo I don't like so much in handball. But so is it the, the the French team was the, at the moment and the, this this part of of my career they were they were the better team and I have to congratulate one more time for that. But we had our chances, you know. But uh, we lost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. It, it. Look, the game was incredible. You guys were up by two um, in the second half. Yeah, um, and you know, and I have, and I have one eleven shots and three goals. And you want to tell me that? And you missed the goal. <laughs> oh. No, it was really, it was really, it was really hard. We we tried to do everything, but they were, they were definitely better team at the moment. And it's hard to say now. It's yeah. eleven years ago. Yeah, but I have to tell you, hard, it's they were the better team. Yeah. No, I mean, you look. They, that group of guys in French team was incredible, but your group of guys was also incredible. I mean, if you look at who was playing, just it's equally great. Greatness yeah, was I, on that court, on that field, in front of 15,000 people for sure. Yeah, but, that's, uh, what, what, that's what Jerome told you. I'll tell you the story from my side. We, 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 had, we win two finals, 2003, the, champ, uh, the World Championship against Germany, yeah. and 2004, the Olympics, the final against Germany. And Stefan Kretschmann told a million of times, you know, guys, I'm going to kill you. I have just two wish in my life to be the world champion <laughs> and to win the Olympic Games because of the Croatia, you win it, you know. <laughs> and we all said, sorry, son, we are the better team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Someone always suffers. Yeah. So, Let's look at that. Obviously, you, your generation with Balic and, and Bori and, and all the other ones, uh, you are one of the golden generations. Um, but it feels like the new one, uh, the new generation of Croatia with Duvnak ahead, especially for the last European Championship, it feels like that old, uh, they brought this old feeling of that competitive spirit and, and the energy and the, the, that enjoying representing Croatia more than I watched them a few years ago. What do you think about what's going on right now with the national team? I have, I have the luck that the last European Championship played in uh, Austria and, and, and Sweden. I was with the team all the time. I was in the hall watching all the games yeah. live because a few years, uh, the years before I win the, with the job, I worked with the Croatian television to, yeah. with commentator. And after second game, I think that was uh, West Russland or against Serbia. And I told the guys, I have some feeling what I didn't feel 10 years ago. 
yeah. the last 10 years. Yeah. And when you ask me, what is that? I don't, I can't tell you that's because of that, because of that, or because of this. It's some, some feeling, you feel like a sportsman, something happened, what's, what's that now? <laughs> that something, something happened, something positive. And uh, that was one, one click, one, one thing which gives that power. And, and I have to, to say that the guys were perfect, all the championship. But this, what Domagoj Duvnyak did on this championship, yeah. is unbelievable. Yeah. He was the really real leader, leader in all segments of the of the game, of the life. He was yeah. the leader at the, uh, 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 in uh, in the defense. He was the leader in the offense. And when was the timeout after the game, before the game, he motivated the guys. Yeah. He talked with the with the referees. He was really leader, and he played. I have to tell you, one perfect championship. Yeah. And I'm I'm sad because because Croatia didn't win. But I'm I'm really sad because of Domagoj. He really want to win the gold medal with Croatia, and then he can, he can say, "I did everything in my career with with uh, with my club, and especially with the national team." Yeah, well, yeah, he he definitely uh, became a, a an incredible leader. I mean, just the last few years, he has he has become a different Dubna. He plays with so much more calmness and doesn't rush. You know, he takes his time. He shoots when he needs to. He is high high percentage. I mean, I think his time in, in Germany really paid off a lot. Yeah, he played there for more than 10 years now. Yeah. But when you saw him, uh, when, he, when he's playing, that looks so easy, like when Balic played. You exactly. take the ball, scored, you, you win, uh, win in, in defense, you take the ball. I played in this defense, what Croatia played, the uh, five plus one. Yes. This one in front of the, yeah. I, that was my position next to him. But when I saw him, it's unbelievable what he's doing. He know what you will do. No, he know before you do it what will you do it. That's, that's incredible. Dunjak is what he, the the style of style of his handball last two or three years. It's unbelievable. It's really he was the MVP in Bundesliga this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is one one player. We had a ballet. We said we said we will long time we will not, uh, we will not have another one. Now we have Dunjak. And I hope so. After Dunjak, we will have something like 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 these guys because that's that's something what Croatia deserves. Yeah, I, I was going to ask you about that. Are how is the younger generation coming up in in Croatia? Is there a lot of them or just still very few? Yeah, it's always a lot of them. But the question is, this this, this step from junior c- category to to senior handball is a big step, you know. And a lot of the guys something lose they they the quality. That's like I when, when one tennis player, even Ljubicic, you know, yeah, when, yeah. When, when I ask him what is the difference between junior tennis and senior tennis, and the the, the best explanation I've ever heard is, you know, in in junior category, you are the fish in aquarium, <laughs> and and uh, and after when you come to senior, someone take this aquarium, put it in the sea, and said, come on, guy, Go survive. <laughs> That's so it's, it's always the difference between between senior handball and senior sport and junior sport. But I have to tell you, we have really, really good young generation. We have uh, one guy left-handed, even Martinovic. He he was oh, injured the best, on the last best, the best handball player in the world, the uh, junior. Yeah, 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 on the last world championship, and he was surprised for everybody when I saw him on the training with the national team. That was I said, oh, did this guy play like he's 27, 28, not 20, 21? But he had a bad luck that he injured the leg. On the last or two two days before before the trip to to Austria before the European Championship, yeah. but he missed it. But on the next one, he will be the really surprise. He will be one of the, I think that he will be one of the new leaders of the Croatian national. Yeah, he's he's good. He's very very talented. Yeah, he's uh, really good. So um, obviously, I, I just saw that Bori became a head coach of Zagreb. Uh, is he still the assistant coach in national team? I don't know. I know yeah. he will the, the, the assistant the national coach will be with Wadi or will will stay the, the I, I really don't know. Yeah. In the that, that was for me also the surprise. He was yeah. the, Big the surprise. first sports director and he worked in the in the in the Croatian Handball Federation and it was a surprise to me. I called him and I said, What again? I, you know, I, I have I, yeah, he really won, he wants to try. Okay. He thinks that he 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 can do it. And the, the guys like Wadi deserve this, this chance to to try to be the trainer. I wish him the the. I wish him everything best, and I hope that he will he will do the great job. But yeah. not, it will not be easy. Yeah. No. Being a coach is different than being a a, a leader on the on the court, and the way he was. Is oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's going to be fun to watch. Actually, at least he's going to be the tallest head coach in uh, handball history for sure. 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Dominico is also here. But you know, the, the same thing was with, with Ljubov Ranjic in Flensburg. He came to Flensburg like sport director yeah. or like some... And the, I know right. Per Karla was trainer before him. And they said, ah, who will be the coach? Ljubov, come on. Mm. And you became the best coach in, in, in the next two years. He won the yeah. Champions League with Flensburg and everything. So it's not, maybe it's not a bad way. No, no, of course not. Hey, look, listen, he wants it. He has experience. He knows, everyone knows him, respects him. So, if you get a chance, let's see. Yeah, but if he if he don't uh, if if he if he will not do a great job, you know who will be no. the, the guy who will say, "Yeah, you're not for that." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's nothing you can do. Um, yeah, the, but we are French. The the, the the French. The we can we can say to everybody everything. So when jokes, when someone else tell you hey, you are you are not so good, so what what are you talking about? But when we between us and then from this team. Tell something like that to each other it's not a problem at all yeah exactly that's a beauty that bonding of handball that's i love that no other sport has it like we do so got on it uh lately you are you've been a lot on tv so is that what your focus right now in life is no that was just that was just something what we start with jumbo was with lots which i think so one year the sports commentator and lots which can do next year then call me uh -huh. so will you be the sports commentator with Mirza and Mirza and me we were the together in the room we were the really good friends yeah. all, all our all our life and uh, of course I, I accepted and that was four four beautiful years with the work with the uh, with him and the with team of uh, and uh, yeah. from the Ertel Croatian Ertel and uh, the, the last thing we do together was a uh, European Championship in Croatia yeah. This 22 days was perfect, and I, I said that was that was something that was new experience for me. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, the reactions, uh, the feedbacks from the from the from the people looking at us was really positive, and I hope so that we'll do it also in the future. But that, that's not something what I'm primarily doing in my in my career now, in my ah. life. Now. Okay, what are you up to these days? I was I'm working in uh, one travel agency, okay. uh, specialized for sports tourism. So we are the official, the official travel agency of Croatia Olympic Committee, Croatia Handball Federation, a lot of, lot of uh, other uh, sports federation. So we are working a lot with the sports and everything. The sports organize the sports camp, organizing the, organizing the, uh, the flight tickets for the teams, for the national Olympic Committee. We are working for them for the Olympic Games. So everything about sport is in my hands now. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's a lot of fun. So you, you can, yeah, yeah, you can choose to go anywhere you want to, whichever competition. Yeah, and I, a lot of it. I have to tell you that my wife told me, like, you, you travel more than when you play there. What, what's going wrong with you? So I really, I really travel. So in, in, uh, in, uh, in Hamburg, you travel the most in the Europe. And when you have some championships, like in Egypt was or in Japan. But now after my, after my sports career, when I start to work in business, yeah. my, what the position where I am, I travel also to South America, from Chile, Jakarta, Indonesia. China, Japan, all, all over the world. I oh, saw wow. everything. Yeah. So and and I like I like to yeah. to travel. Still like to travel, and it's no problem for me. So I'm really enjoying. Yeah. That's good. That's excellent. I mean, I, I still remember you uh, the trip in New York City when you came in and um, and we had that breakfast in middle of Times Square. You, me, and and Mirza. Yeah. 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 So do, tell me a little bit. What do you remember about the tournament that we had? How how, yeah. how do you remember it? You know the the the, the first the, the, when the first call when the first uh, touch we had so would you like to come to, to New York to play the handball game like, yeah, to New York to come yeah of course <laughs> I'm dealing in a moment so I re I really remember everything so from from the, I was first time then in, in New York and that this wow effect what you when you when you came first to, to New York I was like like a little baby like oh, look at this look at that <laughs> and in the end when we came to the hall when we see the handball you're Nobody expected the handball on that level in in Europe, honestly, because the 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 nobody not not a lot of handball players is in America. On so yeah. just a few teams there, yeah. but the level you you have in New York and everything it's uh, who 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 that's not that we you will win with uh, with the left hand. And I have to tell that I the first the first year when I was there and he, every time after that I really I'm really happy to came to came there and to to see you can see really the expansion of the quality. In your team, when you're working a lot, you you you're you're uh, organized a lot of a lot of marketing. So you you told me that you play in Times Square once just to put the goals there yeah, and play. Yeah, yeah. And so that's that's good things for the handball and the glass thing. But uh, 
when the NBA players start to talk about Hamill at some small sport there. That's, Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that that was incredible. I mean, you guys coming in, like, you know, I, obviously this whole thing started sort of an accident with Carl calling me. Yeah. Hey, I, I have some some top professional players that come. Wanna, wanna, I want to bring them to New York for vacation for New Year's Eve. And can we play handball? I said, sure. I said, who are the guys? And then he mentioned Lovgren, Vranjes, Hans, Svensson. I'm like, what? Like, are you joking? So I was like, I will arrange the gym. I will arrange the party in the middle of Times Square. Just bring them in. And then from that point on, every year when you guys came in, it was a huge motivation for all of us to train, to be ready, to show that we can play more and more. So those five years were such a big help to in improve our quality because we really wanted to, be, uh, to, to show you that we can do better. It was incredible. It was the best time for us. And, and I'll tell you, honestly, nobody... Nobody never organized so much top players all over the world in one place. You did it for five years in a row. <laughs> <laughs> I, we have to bring it back. I'm thinking so much. I got to bring it back. It cannot be over. I cannot let it be over. So hopefully. I hope so. I, you have my, everything from my side. If I can help you, I'm here. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Uh, do, you know, do you know that actually United States um, got a wild card for 2025 and 2027 world championships? You know the 2025 the World Championship will be in Croatia. I know, I know. <laughs> now, I didn't know the, for the I didn't know for the wild card, but if anyone deserve it, then deserve the, the states because that you invest a lot of the handball and that's for the handball is also the the, the marketing place the, the United States and yeah. North America to to promote something. It's that's the right place. So I really hope that you will be you will be part of the World Championship and I I know that you will be I know. Want to say something negative, but you will not be the Grenland or something like that. Almost <laughs> seventy-seven to three, yeah. but um, I think you will you will you will have a good team, but you have just to work. Yeah, but it. wait, what do you think? The USA is already preparing to beat Croatia in two thousand twenty-five. They have I the plan. So. Hey, believe <laughs> I hope so. I bring all all your team to the dinner if you do it. <laughs> anyway, I'll do it. <laughs> that that would be incredible, actually. Yeah, that will be good. If the the Vori will maybe will be the coach of the national team by that time, the moment, yeah. and he will lost against states. Hey, oh. That oh. Will be <laughs> yeah, that he will he will be banned from Croatia forever if that happens. Yeah, yeah. from the Europe, not from Croatia. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, you never had the desire to to become a coach. Yes, I had it. I oh, okay. finished the college. I finished the college. I can. I have the license. I have everything. But just after my career, my way came on on some other side, and uh, I start to do something else. Maybe like what? One day you just I will call you. I've been. I'm the trainer of the national team. <laughs> <laughs> but at the moment, at the moment, <laughs> at the moment, I don't have so some some ambition to be the national coach or something like that. At the moment, I'm satisfied with the things I'm doing. Okay. Okay. No, I, I understand. I mean. You, you, you've got things taken care of in the proper direction. So do you, do you play any sports right now? How do you stay fit? Yeah, for luck, you, 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 uh, the, here you can see just my head. My head <laughs> because I have 30 kilo more than, <laughs> than usually I have to be. No, no, I didn't do it. I know because I'm a big guy now, a fat, I will say. <laughs> and uh, everybody asks me, why are you doing this? Why you can't train? I can. But I don't want. It's less <laughs> interaction after my career. I really don't want. I hate training. I have to tell you, I trained 25, 30 years, but I hate training. Yeah. Yeah, I, we train because we have to, and I know that's good for me, and that's that was my job. That was, but I hate it, and I still hate it. You know, it's yeah. everything would bring me to the. No, 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 no. I like to eat. Yeah. I can eat the whole thing. <laughs> I like to eat. <laughs> yeah, I, you know what. I completely agree with you. It it is a pain in the butt to to go train every day, and especially especially now the way we're stuck at home, it's been like what hundred days. It's like, yeah. like it's just I, I cannot even imagine. I can do anything when 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 you are, when you're part of the team, and then the whole team do something and you do with did it with the team, but alone to do something, go run <laughs> alone and go to gym alone. Like no no alone nothing. Alone, I can eat, but it's also the eating is better with the team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if you're with a handle team, those those dinners can go for a long time.
I think I lost you, Gorane. Oh, you're back. You're back. That's good. Uh, just a second, just a second. Are you here? Yeah. Just a second. Something's going on. Ah, I'm here. Sorry. Okay. Excellent. Perfect. Um, so are you, um, are you planning to do something for the summer or you're stuck at home because of the no. coronavirus? No, we, are, we, are, we were stuck at home for three months and now in Croatia, like everything okay. We don't have some new, new oh. situation. So last, last 15 days, everything is open in Croatia. We are working normally. We can travel normally. Oh, good. I fly with the planes in Croatia. Then the whole Europe is still a situation in, in some, in some uh, countries where it's still not okay. But I have to tell you that the Croatian guys in this, the Croatian politic, I'm not going to talk about a politic, but it's really good thing to, to stop it, to control it. To three, three, three months was the hard, but now we can work normally. And as I told you, I travel normally. I travel to Dubrovnik. I'm here on the sea at the moment. I will come back in two days in Zagreb. So everything, everything is working okay. I hope so. That will be so all over the world in, so, as soon as possible. Yeah. And my summer will be... Part, one part of that will be in Zagreb because I have to work, but another one will be in my hometown in Dubrovnik yeah. here where I'm born. Well, that's good. Good news. I mean, I'm, I'm debating whether to come to Kosovo or not because it, it's just so challenging with all the, the flight rules and you never know if I can come back again. So don't want to deal with it right now. So t tell me one thing about uh, the qualification for the Olympics with Croatia. Are they still going to happen in Croatia or not? No, they'll be in France. They plan to be in France, oh. and then we, uh, the fourth. That, that's a hard group, it's a tough group. With the France, first game will be against the France, then against the Portugal, and Portugal is really good team. Became a really good team, and the the third, the last team was Tunis, the second team in in African Championship. So yeah. it will be hard to to be one of the first two places, and especially when it's playing Paris in Bercy, someone in April 2021. So okay. three three months three months before the Olympic Games. It have to be. It has to be in uh, yeah, this April and in uh, France also. I have. I, ho I hope that Croatia will be in Tokyo next year. That means that they will through, go through through the qualification tournament, like first or second one, and to play in the Olympic Games. Yeah. No, I mean, look, the way they played in in Euro Championship, I have no doubt they they can beat Portugal and Tunisia and France is still rebuilding for some reason so yes but you can see that the portugal beat the france in the, in the european championship i, I know the I portugal saw it, yeah. beat france in the qualification they play in the same group so the portugal they start to win after the after the world championship 2003 so 17 years ago they started to to invest a lot of in, in, in the handball so and the results can come now out and the portugal will not be one of the team who will be just there to be there to be on the European Championship. That will be very soon the the team who will said we we will try to to come to the semi final and you know what it means is European Championship semi final. You are just one step to the med. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's I, it's going to be exciting. I it's going to be really tough, exciting to watch those games. Are you going to go? Yes, of course. Yeah, I will be there. So with my business, but with my first love, the biggest love in sports is handball and. I am I am everywhere where where Croatia national team is or uh, yeah. Hamburg club Zagreb. When we play the Europe, I try to be everywhere because I really like it and uh, to be. If I can't play, unfortunately, cannot more. But I am the the biggest of, uh, supporter of the of the Croatian handball. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Gorane, I'm, I I know it's getting late in your in your part of the world. I really appreciate you joining the show, and I'm so happy to see you. It's been a while since I really saw you face to face. So. Thank you so much for joining the show, and I'm going. I hope I'm, I'm going to see you very soon, whether in Croatia or in New York City, one of the parts. Yeah, Mina, thank you one more time for inviting me. The, the pleasure is on my side also to see you, say hello to to all the guys in in, in states that when, when when we trade together and and play together, and really hope to see you soon in states in Croatia and in Kosovo. Everywhere, yes, absolutely. Thank you, Goran, and and a new shirt is coming to you. You just have to tell me your new size now. Okay, no problem. <laughs> Double X, triple X, and it's not the biggest one you have. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Billy, keep in touch. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye. Ciao, ciao.